All right. Welcome, everyone, to another exciting edition of Dream Time with Danielle, and that is me. How are you guys doing? Having any weird dreams lately? Any repeated symbols or themes? I'm just going to jump right into mine. Here we go. <clears throat> I dream all the time. I dream that I am being ushered onto a plane for my flight, but it's a theater. A beautiful, old, round theater with pale green paint of a hundred years ago. I have my ticket for 17, nope, 171A. And I'm pleased, it's a window seat. The woman next to me in the theater asks me to rub powder on her neck. I hear my number get called and approach the woman by the door. The woman by my side follows me. I ask her name, she tells me, it did not stick. And then I turn and that same woman is still there, still asking me to rub powder on her neck. So warily I comply and I'm wearing a glove and I'm just rubbing powder on her neck and it's like a talcum powder. And I can see her face on top of her head, like her head was upside down. Like she's looking at me like this all the way backwards and I'm pretty unsettled I'm just like okay what a pretty girl you are just trying to keep the space we go to find our seats she is far from me now and I have a big fuzzy peach apple in my hand ooh in my right hand and see mostly everyone even audience members in costume I think what a weird play no coffee <laughs> and then I also think to myself, and I thought I wasn't going to be traveling anytime soon. And that, my friends, is the dream. So a theater in the round, but it was also a plane. Love it. There, Dad, the mermaid with us today. Theater in the round. So there's a traditional term theater in the round would mean when you are performing to the audience at three different angles it can even mean performing to the audience totally in the round when you are in the center and you're flanked by the audience in four different avenues but in this dream it was a semicircle sort of like an amphitheater like plato would speak to his students theater in the round but it's also an airplane <laughs> okay I also have a plane ticket for 171B. Wait, no, that's not right. 171A. So those numbers don't mean anything to me right now in my waking life, but ones are new beginnings. Sevens are higher learning. It's a number of magic and esoteric knowledge. So a one, seven, and one, when you combine it, that equals nine, and nine is the culmination of things. So. You can dive into number symbolism like I just did. Anytime you dream of numbers or if it holds symbolism for you, 171, maybe you won a lottery. I don't know. So when I arrived to my seat in this theater plane, so clearly travel and theater are very linked for me in my heart. A woman is next to me, this older woman, like 50s. 60s and she continues to make this request that I rub powder on her neck and it's like a baby powder but I don't know that until later it's interesting that someone that I view as more mature is asking for this very juvenile request she doesn't tell me why she doesn't explain what the need is about she's persistent about me doing it though because I meet her over here then my number gets called and I walk towards the exit and she follows me. I have a friendly exchange with the woman taking tickets and this other woman is like, rub powder on my neck. Yes, it was creepy. So eventually I do it, right? I rub the powder on her neck and her head, her head was like tilted totally backwards. That should freak you out. Cause it was freaky, man can't even see her neck because she's leaning so far over. Her head is totally just pivoted in the wrong direction. Necks aren't supposed to do that. So what's this about? I mean, on one hand, we could say, look at things from a new perspective. 
turn that frown upside down. On another hand, we could be looking at this as like bending yourself out of shape, contorting yourself. And I, with a gloved hand, am rubbing this talcum powder on her neck, just in circling motion. So this was really about soothing this other woman, soothing maybe the older generation. Talcum powder is like baby powder, which generally gets used in the diaper changing process. And diaper changing is all about cleaning oneself up, staying hygienic. Wash your hands, folks. It's about transitioning from sitting in your own waist to being refreshed and literally powder fresh. That's an expression. But it was going on her neck. Soothing her skin seemed to be important. The skin is the largest organ in the body. Ha! Huh. This could have been a trivia, but instead I just told you. So yes, skin. The largest organ in the body. Technically, on the body. Skin is the barrier that our inner world has to the outer world. It's both a part of us and a shield. And keeping our skin healthy and safe is like paramount to living a healthy life. Because if you've ever experienced sunburn, rashes, blemishes can be quite painful, blisters, any of those things, you know the pain that your body goes through. When your skin is in trouble, it lets you know. So this woman is experiencing skin trouble on the back of her neck. And the neck is the flexible part of ourselves. It controls what direction we look at. For example, I just looked at my chalkboard and saw her neck was all bent out of shape. Weird. She also had short hair, like, like a, a spiky design. So with a gloved hand, I mean, first of all, we're still in COVID, so keep those gloves up. I have been touching nobody, especially not you, lady. But in the dream, I was like, if I'm doing this, I'm doing it with protection. Wear your rubbers. And because I was unsettled, I was soothing her to soothe myself by rubbing her neck and telling her how pretty she was. Just keep her temperament calm. So some distressing older generation person. Gee, I wonder what that could be about. We're living in very distressing and revealing times where the older generation who once seemed so wise, although did they, did they seem wise? I digress. Are revealing a disturbing lack of awareness about what's really going on. And this woman was very out of touch. So let's move on from her. Thanks lady. We go back to our seats. Do, 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 do. She ends up sitting like all the way over here and I'm somewhere over here. And the theater is green. Green. Remember, green is the color of your heart chakra. Now this is based on the chakras. Everyone has them. They're the energy points in your body. And each chakra corresponds to a specific color frequency. So green is where the heart chakra lies. And that resonates with plant life, nature. It's a love beyond romantic love. It's the love of compassion and understanding and connection. So the fact that this theater was green is really telling me, I mean, my heart belongs to the theater. I was practically born in a theater. I come from a family of theater performers on my mother's side. They're all singers, musicians, actors models. So is it any wonder that I'm here doing this? Theater is also a place of comfort because I've been in one as long as I can remember. Quite practically raised in a theater, whether it was a cable show that my mom and her sister used to do, being in school productions, moving on into the college years, being on stage, off stage. I have a lot of different experiences in theater. And in this particular experience, I'm the audience member. Not just an audience member, but this is a place of travel because this theater is also a plane because dreams. So planes are vehicles. They take us long distances. So this is a long journey. This can also represent that I've already had a long journey in my life with theater, especially because I comment that the shade of green is the green of a hundred years ago. I don't know if you have any interest in history, but there's a very specific shade of green that you find in old fashioned houses. And it's, it's, positively verdant. It's very beautiful, but there's also this pale quality to it. 
and that was the green of here. Maybe I'm just like, this is lead paint, baby. <laughs> so maybe there's a toxicity here. After all, there's this creepy woman who keeps following me around, being followed by someone. That could do with attachments. That could be the energy of feeling anxiety about being around people these days since we're not a supposed to but we are supposed to maintain distance we're supposed to maintain six feet apart this woman was not maintaining that space but in my dream i was not aware of covid it had nothing to do with masks thankfully because as you know if you go back in some dreams it's very prevalent so i'm sitting in my theater plane seat which I mentioned is a window seat, but as you can see, there are no windows. That's just dream knowledge. Like, oh yay, the A, that's a window. Fun fact, that is my favorite seat on an airplane. I'm totally a window seat person. I generally travel alone, so it's not a big deal. But yeah, staring out the window is part of the joy of being on a plane. I'll always choose window over aisle. I do not care. You can have that aisle all you want. But if you want the window seat, well, we'll have to talk. I'm open to compromise, but I also want that window seat. <laughs> also, windows of opportunity. When one door closes, another window opens. A eh? Opportunity, theater, great. Let's move on. Poiple toidle. So the final symbol was this fuzzy peach apple, which I was holding in my right hand. The directions that we hold things, the time of day, all of these things matter when you're looking at the symbolism of your dream. So in my dream, in my right hand, I'm holding a fruit. And this fruit is an apple, but it's also a fuzzy peach because dreams. So let's look at those two fruits. One, they're both very feminine fruits. The way you bite into them, the soft feel of each of them. I'm sure you can see why they're feminine fruits as opposed to say a banana, which is very clearly a masculine fruit. So I'm holding a feminine fruit, but I'm holding it in my right hand. And as far as the energy of your body goes, and this goes for everyone, we all have this, we all carry masculine and feminine energy. All that means is the way the energy moves. Masculine energy is very forward moving. It's logic, decision making, getting from point A to point B as quickly as possible. Feminine energy is more like ripples and timelessness. It's cycles. It's also receptivity, whereas masculine energy is forward moving. So these two types of energies coexist with each other to create all of everything. They create multiplicity, not just in other beings, but in the way everything moves, the way it receives and any resistance that we have to that. So holding a feminine fruit in my masculine side, the, the side that gives, is holding this feminine fruit. And I'm not eating it, I'm just holding it. And I'm, I'm I guess I'm kind of squeezing it because I can feel it squishy like a peach. Also, the apple corresponds with New York, which is where I'm from. So New York is the big apple. Oh, and it was a big apple. <laughs> I love when dreams do that, it's so literal. It also makes me think of James and the Giant Peach, which is about going on this grand adventure, traveling this crazy distance. Now, I mean, the peach wasn't that big, but it was definitely bigger than any peach that you typically are going to be eating. Fuzzy peach apple. Ultimately, what it means is up to the dreamer. For me, what it means is potential. I'm holding the sweetness of life in my hand, the hand that can give this to someone. Because remember, I didn't eat it. I could very easily give this to someone. No one I know is in this theater, but I'm looking around and I see even the audience members are wearing costumes. And in the dream, I comment that this is weird, but in real life, I would be like, this is awesome. I wish someone had told me I would wear one of my costumes. <laughs> costumes are one of my favorite things, whether it's in a show or in real life, or for Halloween, dressing up is such a privilege. It's such fun. You get to put on roles. You get to decide who you are for that day. You get to decide if you have a funny accent. This is me twiddling my mustache. Being in a theater allows people 
the chance to express themselves. It gives them the opportunity to deliver a message. It also gives you an opportunity to receive a message because I was an audience member. I was not on stage. I was the audience. So looking at things from another perspective, receiving messages, holding bountiful opportunities. What a beautiful dream. Well, thanks again for joining me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this dream. If you have dreams that you're interested in being interpreted, information is down below to send that to me. Doodle it out. We'll explore the symbolism together. And hopefully we'll get to a deeper core meaning. Now, before I go, I always say we are what we are in the dream. So that also means I am the theater. I hold space for messages to be delivered. I am this creepy older woman. I do bend myself out of shape sometimes. I do seek comfort. I'm also the powder. I'm soothing. I make people sneeze. And I'm also this fuzzy peach. Yes, I'm a bountiful fruit filled with potential and there's a hard pit where my heart used to be. No, I'm just kidding. Remember, dreams are very personal. Have fun with them. I had fun with this one. And I'll see you guys next time here on Dream Time with Danielle.